Hurricane Aaron is about to become massive as it approaches the east coast of the U.S. From the strong winds to storm surge, this storm is going to be a problem. Impacts are expected to begin as early as Wednesday. In this update, I'm breaking down the latest track, intensity, and exactly where Aaron's impacts are going to happen. And we'll also see if there's any more tropical systems lurking out there. But first, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here for more tropical weather updates. So here's a current look at satellite imagery of Hurricane Aaron. As you can see, it's not super organized. It, it is actually weakening down below major hurricane intensity. You can see there is intense convection to the north side of the center. It's not really an eye or anything like that, but it's, it's still a, a powerful hurricane and the wind field is expanding, even though we're seeing the maximum winds coming down as there is some increasing shear. Now the shear is actually gonna back off pretty soon going into tonight, and that could allow it to intensify a little bit or at least maintain its intensity going forward, but the wind field is going to be expanding, even if the maximum winds are going down, which will spread the impacts further away from the center. Maximum sustained winds are at 105 miles an hour, so it's a Category 2 hurricane. Minimum central pressure is 958 millibars, and it's moving north and northwest at 10 miles per hour, so it's, it's making that northerly turn. It's not expected to make landfall along the east coast of the U.S., but it's going to get close enough to cause significant impacts, especially along the coast of North Carolina. Then we have another disturbance right here. 60% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days. This is near the Leeward Islands in the tropical Atlantic. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic continues to produce a broad area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development of the system in a tropical depression could form toward the end of the week or this weekend. It should move westward to west-northwestward around 20 miles per hour and approach the vicinity of the northern Leeward Islands on Friday. The northeastern Caribbean is expected to get impacted from this system. It may or may not be a tropical system at this point, but it will bring some significant rainfall and gusty winds to the northeastern Caribbean. After that, it looks like it could turn, so maybe a fish storm with this one, which would be a good thing. And then behind it, we have another disturbance invest 99 with a 30% chance of formation in the next 48 hours. It's producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms and conditions could be favorable for development over the next couple days. But after that, there's going to be a lot of shear. So it's probably not going to do much of anything. I'm not expecting development with this one, really. Here's the cone for Hurricane Aaron. By 2 p.m. Wednesday, this should be getting closer to North Carolina, and the wind field is going to expand, bringing that risk for tropical storm force winds along the outer banks of North Carolina, specifically, where there are tropical storm warnings. So those watches that were in place yesterday have been upgraded to tropical storm warnings. We're also seeing tropical storm watches extending up along the coast of Virginia, even the Delmarva Peninsula the, the southern part, the Virginia part of the Delmarva Peninsula is under tropical storm watches as this will be approaching. The closest approach to the coast of North Carolina looks to be on Thursday, so somewhere Thursday morning, it looks like, according to the cone. And then the intensity is less than what we were expecting before. So the maximum winds, it's not expected to become a major hurricane. It's, it's not even expected to regain major hurricane intensity, even as it enters more favorable conditions over the next 24 hours or so. But we're only looking at a Category 2 hurricane, maybe even a, a high-end Category 1 hurricane. But the wind field is going to be the big thing. It's, it's how far those winds extend out from the center which is going to be causing the big impacts in terms of, of wind, also storm surge, because of that pressure gradient, that big pressure gradient with this huge hurricane, and also the, the high surf, the rip currents. Those are also going to be an issue even if you're outside of the wind field. That's extending out. It, it's already happening now, but will continue through the rest of the week. And we also have tropical storm watches for Bermuda as tropical storm force wind gusts are definitely possible there, if not tropical storm force winds, but it is closer to North Carolina, and that's where the stronger winds are expected. Key messages for Hurricane Aaron. Again, life-threatening surf and rip currents happening along the beaches of the, in the Bahamas, the east coast of the U.S., Bermuda, and Atlantic Canada over the next several days. Also, storm surge and tropical storm force winds are expected in the Outer Banks of North Carolina starting 
late on Wednesday or Wednesday night, and those tropical storm watches and storm surge watches have been upgraded to warnings. The storm surge will be accompanied by large waves leading to significant beach erosion and overwash, making some roads impassable. Apparently, there have been some evacuation orders in place along the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Those waves can easily cause a problem for those islands out there. And tropical storm conditions are possible in Bermuda on Thursday and Friday, where tropical storm watch is in effect. Also, interests along the U.S. mid-Atlantic and southern New England coast should monitor the progress of Aaron as strong winds are possible Thursday and Friday. Here's a look at the arrival time of tropical storm force winds, as well as the wind probabilities graphic. Tropical storm conditions could begin as soon as Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the coast of North Carolina, so late on Wednesday afternoon or closer to Wednesday night along the coast of North Carolina and even the coast of Virginia. And then also Bermuda looking at Thursday morning, perhaps with the arrival of tropical storm force winds there. And we could be seeing some tropical storm conditions, at least at gusts, but potentially tropical storm force winds across the Bahamas as well happening now. And then Atlantic Canada should also be watching for the potential of strong winds as as well as the northeastern US looking at looking at some tropical storm force wind gusts perhaps anywhere from 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts at least if not higher tropical storm force wind gusts possible along the mid-atlantic coast and the northeastern coast of the US but how strong are the winds actually going to be here's a look at the potential wind gusts this is the on the euro model showing potential wind gusts 8 p.m. eastern time on Wednesday, so this is t tomorrow Tomorrow night, basically, we're looking at wind gusts start off not, not too bad, around that 25 to 30 mile an hour range. Cape Hatteras looking at 27 mile per hour wind gusts, Moorhead City a little higher at 33 miles an hour. But as we go through the night, those winds are going to be ramping up, exceeding tropical storm force wind gusts along pretty much at Moorhead City, Ocracoke, and Cape Hatteras. Then those winds by 5 a.m. are really intensifying with Gusts approaching 60 miles an hour at Cape Hatteras, especially. And then those winds actually intensify going into 11 a.m. on Thursday. We could be seeing, according to the Euro model, 50 mile an hour wind gusts in Virginia Beach, 67 miles per hour at Cape Hatteras, and 62 miles an hour at Ocracoke Island. Moorhead City could be looking at 43 mile an hour wind gusts. Then we have those winds continue through the day, even reaching by the early afternoon, 70 miles an hour, exceeding 70 miles mile an hour wind gusts, possibly hurricane force wind gusts, according to the Euro model offshore, depending on how close this ends up getting and how much the wind field expands. Hurricane force wind gusts possible, I'm thinking anywhere really from, from 60 to 70 miles an hour, but can't rule out some higher wind gusts possible along the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And then those winds start to pull away going through the, the later part of the afternoon down to 60 miles an hour at Cape Hatteras. And then those wind gusts really drop off, still looking at those, those wind gusts near Virginia Beach happening. But then things drop below tropical storm force going through Thursday night. And then as we go into Friday, those wind gusts could be reaching the northeast. We have 50 to 55 mile an hour wind gusts around Cape Cod possibly approaching 60 miles an hour through the day on Friday. And then that heads off towards Atlantic Canada with still tropical storm force wind gusts extending very far out from the center, even approaching 50 to 60 miles an hour for Nova Scotia going into Saturday. And then this continues off as really it's going to be turning into more of a post-tropical cyclone at this point, but still looking at some very significant wind gusts around the center of the storm happening there. And the storm surge is going to be an issue, especially for the, for the Outer Banks in North Carolina, where two to four feet of storm surge are expected between Duck and Cape Lookout. And then we're looking at from the South Santee River to Cape Lookout, one to three feet of storm surge. The rest of the coastal areas of North Carolina inside the Outer Banks, North Carolina looking at one to three feet. And then the coast of Virginia up towards the Delmarva Peninsula, also looking at looking at up to three feet of storm surge. Now here's a look at the HAFS A model. What's this hurricane going to be doing? What's the intensity going to be looking like? Tonight we're, we could see winds of around 90 miles an hour. Some of the, the hurricane models are showing 
some fluctuations in intensity that this could be a category two, maybe even a high end category one, since this has actually weakened a little bit more than the NHC was forecasting at first. But we're still looking at a, a very large, powerful hurricane approaching North Carolina through Wednesday and Thursday. And notice the closest approach does happen sometime on Wednesday night going into Thursday morning with those tropical storm force winds expected along the coast of North Carolina. And winds are still around 90 miles an hour in, in the hurricane. Now, notice those maximum sustained winds ex are actually separated by a decent distance from the center. And then we're looking at more tropical storm force wind, wind gusts possible around Cape Cod, moving towards Atlantic Canada with those winds continuing. Then as we go into the weekend, Hurricane Aaron will be turning into more of a post-tropical cyclone. Here's a look at the intensity guidance. We're looking at winds around, this is showing uh, around 105 miles an hour. We could see some re-intensification a little bit over the next 24 to 36 hours, possibly. They're looking at maybe intensifying back to a major hurricane. I don't necessarily think that's gonna happen, but we'll see. Then it stays a category two hurricane, slowly weakening through the next 72 hours before it really starts dropping off. And, and it will be more of a post-tropical cyclone with tropical storm force winds by Saturday. Now here's a look at the GFS model. Here's Hurricane Aaron. Here's our disturbance with a 60% chance of formation. And here's Invest 99. And so let, let's see what happens. You see Hurricane Aaron continues off to the north, getting pretty close to North Carolina on Wednesday into early Thursday. It actually intensifies more down to like 940-ish millibars, maybe even 939 millibars. It's going to be the size of that wind field, the size of that pressure gradient, causing some significant strong wind impacts, potentially some outer bands moving towards North Carolina as well. Not a whole bunch of rain expected from that, but still some impacts there. And then that lifts off to the northeast. And then we see our tropical disturbance over the northeastern Caribbean bringing rain, but not even organized into a tropical system. Then that lifts off to the north and it turns. Notice it, it actually turns. You do have this big trough coming down into the eastern part of the U.S. with more frontal activity reaching into the southeast and the southwestern Atlantic. And that pulls our tropical system that does try to turn into something. We do have light to moderate wind shear and high sea surface temperatures and moisture that should allow for some development at least. And then that actually lifts off to the north, gets carried out as a fish storm, and then nothing happens with Invest 99 either. And then it looks like the tropics could quiet down for a little bit before we see possibly some more activity. This is hinting at some activity possibly around the Central American gyre going into the beginning of September. We'll see, but this massive high pressure system actually takes over the Atlantic once again, putting more stable conditions and very, very dry conditions across a lot of the Atlantic, potentially shutting down the tropics temporarily after that. Here's a look at these ensembles for our disturbance. We do see that it, it does make that turn after it hits the northeastern Caribbean. And yeah, it pretty much becomes mostly a fish storm. Maybe Bermuda might have to watch next week around Tuesday or so, Monday and Tuesday, going to Wednesday perhaps. But other than that, we're not expecting anything too significant out of that. We'll have to see the en ensembles are, are hinting at a signal perhaps around the Central American gyre, but this is still, that's 12 days out. So that's way off in the distance. We'll have to see what happens with that. Here's the Euro Ensemble not showing any development with our disturbance after it moves past the Leeward Islands. Really no development expected with that and it does turn out to sea. So that's probably not gonna be a, a too terrible of a storm system, but still we'll have to watch. And then the tropics could quiet down for a, a few days after that before we have to watch another area for potential development, the Climate Prediction Center. This is their latest Global Tropics Hazards Outlook issued today, August 19th, 2025. Week two, looking at 
from August 27th to September 2nd, a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation near Cape Verde in the main development region, and then also a 20% chance in the eastern Pacific before we go into week three where things look like they might heat up a little bit more. September 3rd to September 9th, looking at a 20% chance of formation in the main development region, clipping the northeastern Caribbean again, and also the Central American Gyre region, the Western Caribbean, the Southern Gulf, and the Eastern Pacific heating up once again, especially the Eastern Pacific with that 40% chance of formation. And there's this, I haven't showed this in a while, the MJO. We're looking at very pretty unfavorable conditions across the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific, and that's gonna continue till almost the end of August before things look like they might open up again in the beginning to middle of September timeframe from around September 3rd going through September 13th and also getting more favorable over Africa that will help to generate some more of those tropical waves moving off that will have development potential as we head into the peak of hurricane season. So that's pretty much what's going on in the tropics. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.